Hi, my name is Morgan Ernst, and I am currently taking a class called Technology Coaching and Leadership. For the class, we've been reading an insightful book called Naturalizing Digital Immigrants, Power of Collegial Coaching for Technology Integration. In the introduction to this book, we define digital immigrants as teachers that are not born in the digital age, as well as those that are not comfortable using technology in the classroom. So this actually spans to a wide variety of teachers and educators today, and the goal of the class is to use the collegial coaching model to be able to help those teachers build proficiency and become more confident integrating technology into their classrooms. As we've been reading for class, I came across a paragraph that I thought was particularly important. It's found in chapter 6 on page 70. I'm going to read it for you. It says, In learning, as in life, relationships matter. They matter because learning, whether by students or teachers, does not naturally spring forth from ideas and plans. Learning does not take place on computer screens. Instead, genuine learning often originates through the interaction with people. And as the often repeated saying goes, coach teachers, much like students, will never care how much you know until they know how much you care. Therefore, the importance of relational foundations established in mutual trust, respect, and caring cannot be overemphasized. This paragraph struck me as being really important, and I'm hoping that it resonates with other educators as well. We often talk about how important relationships are with our students so that we can build trust and that they buy into the things that we're doing in the classroom. It's equally as important when we're using the collegial coaching model and working with other teachers to build strong foundations in those relationships so that they're invested in the work as well. On page 71, Alanis and Wilson go on to state, effective coaches should also devote time to learning as much as possible about those they intend to coach. While it is really important that we understand the personalities of the people that we're going to coach, the things that they excel at, their strengths and their weaknesses, it's also really important that we understand ourselves as leaders as well. Chapter 6 provides three online resources that you can use to help analyze your own personal traits. The first is the Myers-Briggs. This test helps people to understand how they perceive the world around them and how they make decisions. The second one is a Strength Quest quiz. This quiz lists out your strengths and your weaknesses as different traits so that you can see how you interact with people. The third is a quiz based on Howard Garner's theories of multiple intelligences. The combination of these three quizzes can be used to help you analyze how you interact with your colleagues, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and then you can use those to reflect on the things that you should do in order to build the best collegial coaching relationship possible. While the results of these tests are interesting enough on their own, the real benefits come when you take the time to reflect and see how you can apply them to your current situation. So if you're interested in seeing my results, they are in the slideshow posted above this video. I'm going to take the next couple minutes to break down each of these tests and use a template that was provided for us in chapter six to reflect on my results and how I'm going to use them in a practical application, both now and in the future of coaching. According to my Myers-Briggs test results, I am an INTJA, which is also known as the architect. Now, every personality trait demonstrated by the 16 personality traits of Myers-Briggs has a really long and complicated explanation, so it's probably best if you take the test yourself and figure out what yours are. But in a nutshell, um, for my personality trait of the architect, it's a fairly rare one. Apparently only about 2% of the population identifies with these personality traits. Um, so some of the benefits of this trait or the pros are that people that are architects are quick, imaginative, and strategic minded. Um, they're also independent and decisive, and they're hardworking and dedicated. On the other hand, some of the downfalls are that they tend to be overly analytical and they can be very judgmental. So this is a, a unique personality trait to be in, and I tend to see this one mostly when I'm working with teachers and they're talking in circles round and round a problem instead of really going in and figuring out what is the issue and what are we going to do to get past that. That really drives me nuts because in my mind I'm very analytical. I want to understand the problem and come up with a solution, be creative along the way and have the freedom to do what I need to do to be able to solve it. So when people are maybe more emotionally invested in a problem, I just have a hard time understanding that and relating to it. So that's something that I have to be very intentional about. I have to slow myself down and give people time to verbally process their emotions and make sure that they are understood and heard so that they feel validated in that process. With this mindset, another thing that I have to be careful about is making sure that I'm not enforcing my beliefs and my ideas on other people. It's very easy for me to say, this is what I think we need to do and we're gonna push forwards in that direction. 
but other people need time to process and maybe have great ideas of their own. So I have to be very intentional again about letting people share their ideas and making sure we're coming to a group consensus. Because this is my natural personality, one thing that I am really good at is being able to problem solve and be really innovative and creative with new solutions. And once I see a set trajectory of where I think we should go, I'm really dedicated and really motivated to try to reach that endpoint and do it to the best of my abilities. According to my Strength Quest Finder results, my strengths are faith, purpose, curiosity, determination, and innovativeness. My weakness is salesmanship. My strengths of curiosity, determination, and innovativeness explain why I'm able to stay self-motivated and determined to reach my final goal. Hopefully, the faith and purpose strengths show that my intentions and my motivations for working with students and colleagues is always at the highest level and I truly have their best intentions at heart. Something that I need to be careful about is expecting too much of other people and also assuming that they're as excited about it as I am. Sometimes the salesmanship comes off as just a general pushiness, trying to push people into doing something. Sometimes on the other hand, it's assuming that people don't care or that the idea is not quite worth it yet, so not sharing or speaking up. The third and final quiz I took online was based on Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. My top two strengths in these intelligences were kinesthetic and logical, which I guess is good since I teach math. I see this as I work with other teachers, especially when we're trying to solve systematic problems. I really enjoy a good challenge and trying to figure out what the best solution is, whereas for some teachers this is really draining and really taxing on them. I also see the kinesthetic side play out when I'm meeting with co-teachers and we're trying to plan activities. I like to do lots of things in the classroom that involve moving around and giving kids chances to interact with each other because I know that I'm not very good at sitting still and I don't expect them to sit still for a whole class period either. With these two being my top two strengths, and interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligence being towards the bottom, it's really important that I continue to be cognizant of other people's emotions and feelings and give them opportunities to express those frustrations. So hopefully you can see that the reflection process of this personality analysis does not have to be lengthy, drawn out, or painful. It's simply a process for you to be able to acknowledge who you are as a person and how that's different from the people around you and then learn how you can interact with those people better. Going forward in the coaching process, I've learned that I approach problem solving a lot differently than a lot of other people do. For me, it motivates me, it drives me, and it's, it's a source of energy. But for a lot of people, it can be frustrating and confusing and can actually draw and suck energy from them. So during the next couple weeks of this coaching process, I'm hoping to make sure I take the time to pause, ask, people I'm working with, how they're feeling, what frustrations they have, and find out ways that I can help them become more comfortable when they're trying to learn how to incorporate technology into the classroom.